Um, so what I'm doing today is the holiday um, or winter challenge, which is just uh, a, a texture, a disguise texture study. Um, and it is to draw any kind of creature, but as long as they're made out of ice. So you get the opportunity to apply sunlight on the ice as, as texture and play around with subsurface scattering. So we can talk about that. Um, not a lot of people joined it. I gotta, I gotta be honest. I don't know what it was. Maybe you guys weren't inspired. Maybe you guys, you were, you, you were tired, tired and uninspired, but not a lot of people joined. Hopefully I can, uh, submit some interesting, motivating, um, assignments for next, uh, our next batch of challenges. So speaking about challenges, um, I might, I, I, t I spoke about this before. If you go to the community tab, I might, um, where is it? Uh, I don't think it's here. Oh yeah, the ancient weapon uh, design challenge. I might host that again this January. So uh, if you guys like the sound of that, comment on the video. By the way, why aren't you all commenting? I don't know why you guys don't comment on the videos. I know you just jump in, take the knowledge and leave me and throw some change at me, but it's not fair <laughs> that you guys leave me without any feedback. So I'd like some feedback, please. Um, uh, that was a really dark image I just drew. Um, but, uh, but yeah, do you guys like the idea of the ancient weapon design? Exact same, like identical challenge. We're just hosting it again to see what, you know, what people can do, which I love this ja challenge so much. I love the color turquoise. I love jade as a texture. It's got subsurface. You've got a female her heroine. You've got, um, you've got like ancient artifacts and stuff like that. And you got the Aztec culture. You got magic, uh, you got mythology. It's just so, so cool. I love this one. And you've got a really uh, in-depth narrative that I wrote um, <clears throat> that you could take a look at, uh, which you might have fun reading. I might edit it just to make sure it's still good. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, 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 what do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments section. Uh, Portrait Studio is still on sale. If you don't know how to get to the store, it's the back.com store <laughs> tab right here. Portrait Studio is at 50% off. It will go at 55% off very soon, <clears throat> probably tomorrow or tonight, uh, sometime before the 20th. Um, and the 55% off won't be for a long period, but it will go back up to 50% uh, off. Um, the reason why I, I, I don't leave it at 55% off is it's just, just because that's way under. Um, and I still want to be able to offer you guys a substantial uh, cut in the price, at least for Christmas week um, and New Year's Eve. Um, and then we just go back to the standard 50% and then we just go back to the standard price. Um, uh, that's it for announcements, I think. Yeah, it's the last critique hour today, talking about subsurface scattering. It's very fitting. Um, and the next one, I might, over the holiday break, submit the uh, ancient weapon design challenge brief for you guys. Um, and then just go from there. Uh, if you guys like the idea, <clears throat> That sounds interesting. Yes, that was a fun one. Um, apologize, we'll comment with 100 emojis. <laughs> Lots of hearts. <laughs> uh, good. Hey, I might not be able to stay long, but I hope everyone's holiday will be good. Hey, Emily. Uh, happy holidays to you, too. I don't get to make it to many of these, but I always love them when I do. Thank you, Delta. Um, so let's get started on looking at these. So <clears throat> let's talk about ice. Um, why? Because it's winter time. <laughs> That's exactly why. Um, so ice is really fun because it is um, blue. And when we're talking about ice, I know that there's different ways ice looks in references. Um, but when you're an artist, you have to pick like the poster child situation of light and color in order to pull off ice. Like, let's say you were doing a league splash and there was an ice component to a league's character um, and you're not going to pick the most outlandish kind of difficult uh, uh, scenario of ice or the, but it's realistic it's real to life but it's a very unique instance of light through that very unique ice that's not just ice but it's like mixed with a bunch you're going to pick a reference like this where you have three things the color blue the subsurface scattering meaning there's no black in this picture and the white, the pure white reflection of the sun. So it's, you're gonna pick the most, I know it's simplistic, but it, it, it's what will make that texture read the fastest so that you're just done with it, you know, and you're past it. All right, so I'll just screenshot some of these. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. 
part. And then the thing is about learning texture like this, so when I assign texture packs for my private students, what I do is I assign them in bundles. Sometimes I'll assign a whole batch just for students just jumping into textures, and then when they're having particular trouble, I, I assign a bundle of all textures that could possibly have subsurface scattering in it. Um, and then I just make them work on that until they, till they get it, till they get the idea. But the beauty of it is that if you study one object that has subsurface scattering that's kind of curved like a jade, like a piece of jade or a piece of really rough, un, uncut, uh, precious stone or something like that, you pretty much know how to do every other piece of glass or ice or jewelry or gem after that. Um, the, the reason why it's complicated, and just like metallics as well, you can do a reflective water surface, you can do a metal surface, you can do armor, you can do oil, it's all pretty much looks the same. No one's going to get like a magnifying glass and check whether or not you got that exact like molecular representation of that instance of oil or glass or, 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 or subsurface scattering or whatever. So you're just learning the general habit of light through that general habit of material. You get it? So write that back to me. So you're just learning the habits of materials and textures. You're learning the habit of light in that material and texture. Which should make textures way less scary, way less daunting, way less um, difficult. Um, and it's not, oh, I have to learn every single texture there is. No, you're just learning the habits and the curves and the changes and the and and the, 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 the usuals, you know, that you see when you look at references per uh, keyword, ice, uh, uh, hair, fabric. <clears throat> um, so there's, there's uh, groups of textures in the world that all act very, very similarly. So the way that hair drapes and the way that fabric drapes is all responsive to gravity. Um, the way that fat works is, is the same across the body. Um, uh, you know, like all the, or the presence of gravity in it. The way water works is the same way that hair works, you know, water flying in the air is the same way hair looks like in the wind. So that's what I mean by understanding the habits of a texture. So it may look from a distance like this pro artist knows how to draw everything, but they don't. They know how to draw like five core textures and then from there they get really, really um, accurate depictions that look accurate, sorry, not really accurate, that look really, really accurate, but aren't actually that accurate at all. So I'm going to open up these guys just so that we have the checklist. All right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so you're learning the habits of materials, not just, um, yeah, not just the, the light and the, the, like either or, you're learning both of them. All right, so for this one, we've looked at a couple of pieces of ice, and um, you're, let's say you were hired to paint this uh, mammoth or whatever it is, um, ice mammoth, right? Yeah. Um, you were supposed to paint an ice mammoth for an employer that was, it was supposed to be a loading screen or something. Well, it's just a quick scenario, simplistic scenario for how we would use this ice mammoth in a game. I'm the employer. I hired you. I'm sending this back to you because it doesn't look like ice. Um, you may have given me some nice etched looking lassoed um, sharp um, layering of your brush strokes in certain areas. It doesn't necessarily read as fur, but I could easily read this as snow on top of fur. And then you've got this body of um, dead grass where there's not a lot of snow. So I wouldn't say I would find an ice mammoth it's near, near to so much um, foliage and warmth on the surface. When I think at Ice Mammoth, I'm thinking about like this freaking palette right here. You've got sharp blues, deep saturated turquoise almost, the yellow of the sun shining through the blue, creating like a green effect here. Um, you see a lot of subsurface scattering, piercing whites moving across it with really unforgiving edges, almost unblended, with a rim of, 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 of um, so squint your eyes. See that rim of blue running across here right beside every major body of white? You see like a rim of blue running down? That's the subsurface scattering underneath the surface of that snow in that area. So when you're talking out, talking about, um, you know, an ice mammoth, I just want this texture in the shape of a mammoth. That's it. Um, and that was what the challenge was. That is what you would have been hired for. So let me try to pull that off here. 
and then, you know, by definition, get the ice going and then figure out the whites from there. Mm, that's going to be a tricky lasso. Um, I'll just, uh, I'll just figure it out. So we're talking about that blue. I'm just going to have it open. So it's really just like navies. It's this whole range and then like a touch of this range. Luckily, they're analogous colors, right? That's what makes it easy. All right. So this painting on its own is beautiful. And if you were going to go for that, like, combo Elsa purple, um, you know, purple-blue magic, that's also cool. Purple-blue ice magic. So this is starting to look a little bit more like ice, and then I'm going to do the another requiring, like a requirement, another qualifying factor. <clears throat> I don't have my thing on, do I? Which is going to be the white. And that white is going to run along the side of the mammoth's tusk. Going down, it's just a really, really, it's just like, um, dodge tool on steroids. So let's talk about dodge tool and subsurface scattering. Don't, okay, it was just PSA, dodge tool is the tool to use on Photoshop for subsurface scattering. However, you have to be, you still have to follow up with sponge tool because you have to be selective with where you put that, that uh, saturation because dodge tool on highlighter mode um, saturates and illuminates right that back. So I'm going to put my sponge tool on saturate and I'm going to saturate the sides right here. If, if saturate can even work because I don't think there's a lot of color there to begin with. But let me just see if I can get it started with saturate. Yeah, there's not a lot of color here, but it's okay. Let me just get it started. So under the surface of the ice, we've got, so we've got white turquoise then blue squint your eyes if you don't see it if you don't see it take your time white turquoise and then blue all right so I'm just pretty much showing you how to work with your references too so I'm gonna get that navy color I'm gonna make sure it's clean and pure so we make that area nice and pure try not to make it too navy all right and then I'm gonna slide this lighter down towards that turquoise we're already we're already getting that subsurface scattering. I didn't even have to do a lot to the slider. And then right beside all those whites, I'm bringing in that slider. So picking your reference well to help you create the an appropriate texture um, that represents that topic the best. And then there's going to be a big, because it's not just, oh, he's, he's, he's subsurface scattered only in some areas. No, it's everywhere. And there's two areas of sub, of, sub, of subsurface scattering. There's the initial bar of, of highlighters locked underneath the immediate surface of the ice, so wherever we're getting reflections. And then there's the general subsurface scattering that is that there's no black because there's so much light bouncing around inside just because the light is on. Just because the sun is out, there's going to be an overreaching curve of, of subsurface scattering that raises those shadows right up. So just along the edges, I'm just responding to the most immediate need of subsurface scattering under the surface. And um, subsurface scattering, the color itself, uh, has to be bright enough to read as subsurface. So just like that. You see that difference? So there was just the color change and then one brushstroke of dodge tool. Selective dodge tool use. All right, I'm just I'm being very, very careful with it. All right, some of these areas I'll have to spot paint as well. And then, and then there's that general subsurface scattering. And that is something that I'm very careful with. So I keep protect tones on. Try to see what it can do. It's just not dark, lightening with it to darken. So turn off protect tones, but keep opacity, exposure really low if you want to raise a shadow up. I just wanted to see if it'll saturate on its own. So I'm finding a shadow pocket. 
a shadow pocket that would otherwise have been dark in a dark normal scene with normal material and a normal mammoth, but this one is not a normal mammoth. He's made of ice. So that entire dark area would just get illuminated just like that. And that's the secret to that subsurface scattering look. And then not just that, we saturate. So saturate and illuminate for the subsurface scattering look. Right, now it looks like he's just generally transparent, which is what ice is, because it's just solidified water. And then I'm going to blur because I used lasso tool. All right, and then you gave us a glowing eye, which was just, it's just not visible. There's so much brightness going around. If you had a twinkling little star light, that is just, that's going to be completely invisible. Have you ever turned on a flashlight or a minuscule little light in the daytime outside your house? You don't, you don't see the light. You have to create a little cocoon around it with your hand to see it. It's not how it works here. All right, and then <clears throat> I'm doing that. And then I'm trying to track down all the areas where essentially I would have a core shadow. And then sometimes you can create like a little spine of subsurface scattering. You see, I don't really have a method. I don't really have this particular, um, uh, other than my reference and my understanding of subsurface scattering, I don't really have any scientific tools to help me measure where I'm putting all the subsurface scattering. In. I just know where core shadows go and that's what I'm attacking for the feel of a uh, translucent object. And that's the beauty of getting your texture studies down. So if you've never done texture studies, if that's something you that's a little bit scary to you, you see 3D modelers do it, you see um, art college graduates do it, and you're like, oh my god, that looks like really, really like advanced stuff. It's not. Do it. Get it out of the way so that you could you know, move forward with your art and, and pick up on those skills. That, that And you can always look up a reference, even if you have the skill, you still have the option of working with a reference and your skill. And then from there, you're just, um, you know, you're, 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 you're in invincible at that point. The texture won't escape you and your work will look amazing. So one thing that's bothering me is, let's say that he was made out of ice. Um, what you can do, what you can afford to do is make the tusks like a transition of white you know into white and they're, they're they're like a different type of ice so you still get that reed that traditional kind of mammoth look and i'm going to use soft brush for that but you transition into it so you get that nice strong white but i'm going to get that subsurface scattering blue and kind of just kind of gradient into it back towards that shadow blue and that looks really, really nice. All right, and then there's also the detail. So there's that little uh, like crystallizing, little crusty ice that forms you know, around a guy's beard. If you've ever been lucky enough to be with a guy with a beard <laughs> and see what, what happens to those majestic manes in the winter, they just grow a patch of ice around them, and it just looks so cute. And that's kind of what I'm trying to represent here is that little mane of, of hair at the top. It's not really hair, it's just ice. And I'm just trying to expand on that detail. I love beards. <laughs> you can tell. Um, bearded men, a treasure. <laughs> they really are. Um, and then I'm going to try to just keep going with that. Trying to just show off some pockets, you know. Just little pockets of ice here and there. And then we'll look at the before and after. So you, a lot of you, I mean, this artist here was very hesitant with their um, representation of the ice, right? Um, they were kind of just just edging around it. They're not really jumping into what it means to paint ice, especially um, ice and sunlight. So hopefully this showed you. It's actually not that hard. 
and it, it should be an enjoyable process because it's it's a process that works directly with references and dodge tools. So what more could you ask for? You're literally barely painting, right? You're barely painting because you're it's just the phenomenon of subsurface scattering is, you know, um, uh, represented so nicely with, uh, with with Photoshop's dodge tool. And I've done another video about this before a couple of years ago and said the same thing. It's the best tool for subsurface scattering. However, um, be selective with this use. Don't be a noob. Don't look like a noob with a foot with a flamethrower because that's what you look like when you overdo the uh, dodge tool. So same thing as before the blue transitions and then the white. So the blue transitions into the white. So it actually looks like subsurface scattering. And then I'm just going to sneak in a little bit of that dodge tool. Just taking a look from a distance. <clears throat> and I'm trying to make sure I still have that stem of core shadow. So the mid-tones turned into subsurface scattering turquoise. The core shadows, that, you know, had he been made out of real fur, the core shadows turned into the blue general subsurface scattering. And any highlights that are not mid-tones or near mid-tones turned into white. See how that's so easy to remember if you think of it like that? Um, and that's that's how you need to be thinking about all of your textures. You need to find a common pattern. And so just like the ice here, right underneath that, that, that layer, that top soil of ice, there's like a, a, a blue cutting through. So I want to do that, but I also want to saturate the living daylights out of that because that's under a lot of pure, pure blue. So... I want to just saturate and then illuminate. Okay. And this would go a long ways um, if had you uh, had a slightly darker background. Like I was expecting you guys to paint some night scenes with some Aurora Borealis and some crystalline um, cave runners like in, like in uh, Star Wars. That would have been really, really cool. Some light comes in. And just kind of, it's kind of like the head is casting a shadow on, on the, on the, um, on itself. And like, you see little ice, um, you see little white patches like that. So select, and so be more confident with those white patches. You're not painting a natural, organic, furry texture. You're painting ice. So ice is pretty, you know, pretty a severe uh, uh, lasso texture. It's a, it's a lasso thing. You know, it's something lasso would take care of really, really nicely. So don't be scared of just jumping in with those sharp outlines. Um, it's ice, you know, it, it needs that. So if you're a timid artist with your use of um, lasso tool, uh, this is good, good practice for you. And then the, the tusks don't look the same size. I'm going to try to do that. Okay, and then I'm just trying to preserve that uh, blue transition here, that turquoise. And all, all of that just from this reference, okay? And, and the darkest area, the darkest little pocket, the, ca the most cave-like thing has just navy blue that's still super saturated. All right. So I really, I really hope this showed you how easy and non-hard textures are. Textures are what you're going to be adding to your paintings. If, if you don't do textures, you're going to be painting bland, handless, uh, unemotional portraits for the rest of your life that have absolutely no environment and no story. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a lot of stuff you got to study, right? You got to get portraits out of the way, get the 14 day challenge out of the way. And then out of that, and this should be nice, inspiring for you, um, um, New Year's resolutions. Um, you know, dreamers, uh, get portraits out of the way, get that done. After that, get basic idea of figures and gestures. Just just try to draw figures. Um, and then out of that, you're going to try some depth and environment, form studies in an environment. Obviously, you should be doing your form studies. Um, and then after that, you should be, after you get a good grasp over your depth rules, textures. Or you can do textures before depth rules. It's really up to you. So I just threw some experimental light there. I did not like it at all. 
And then sometimes when, when ice is really, really uh, illuminated, you'll get like distortion almost highlights. They just kind of glow outward. And I think that's enough subsurface for one day. One thing I don't like is kind of like, this just looks like a third tusk. So what you could do, um, is it tusk or trunk? You know, this is the trunk. What you could do is just do something with the trunk so it actually looks like one. Um, just something that's not perfectly in the middle of these two because it just looks like a horn. <laughs> Excuse me, and a tail. So that might, you know, just show how he's kind of just waving it around the way elephants do when they when they walk. And then um, just subsurface that bitch. All right. And if you want to add texture, you add texture with the amount of subsurface, like if there's interruptions. See how I just added some texture just by uh, scattering my my uh, my dodge tool. And look at my dodge tools exposure. I just want you to take a moment just to look at it. What is what is my dodge tool number? And be honest, what is the usual dodge tool number you guys use? All right, so I copy pasted the old on like before I sporadically added those and I might just erase away just so that I, I want a little bit more texture. Just to show that the trunk is made of something else. And then um, I might saturate what you were doing here. Two to three percent, four percent, yes. And let's say you wanted to add another color. Uh, actually, before I do that, right around these super highlighters, I'm going to put in uh, the color mode, an outline underneath. See that? I'm just exaggerating it here of that blue. All right. And that's, that's kind of like the, the qualifier here. So we have to do that. Just around anywhere where we have some white coming in, we're throwing in that blue. Come over there, just on the trunk, sneaking around underneath the, the rim of the trunk. Just detailing at this point, just trying to find little extras hanging around where I might, might not have seen them. A little little bit of extra light maybe around his eyebrow. I don't want it to read as an expression though. Just trying to, you know, fake volume here. There's something else I could add. I don't like any of those. Um, and then I'm going to get the white and then just try to find rim light. So rim light is big with ice because it's just about the angle and where that subsurface has traveled. And then just dodge tool around there. And then maybe just some ambient light on this leg just to fake some volume. All right, so that, that entire shadow is going to be the color of the of the of the of the mammoth which is on average a blue not purple because he is very very blue and the light shining through a blue glass blue glass of any kind is going to just take the color of the blue glass and then just to, if 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 this was an environment in an MMR, mmorpg and you were supposed to have painted a really really um like a tundra the best thing the quickest fix which all the pros in the, in, the, in, the, in the industry understand is just color mode. And now it'll just, I obviously get rid of the leaves and leave the twigs, but it'll look like a tundra as soon as you do that. Maybe get rid of the leaves. All right, so um, this could be a cool exercise. One could be, you know, in the summer, one could be in the winter, one could be in the spring. So now it looks a little bit more like an ice mammoth in the middle of a, a tundra. And um, it just looks a lot more natural. But this is if, if, if for some reason it's an elemental the gamer summoned and it's still a really warm field, you could keep what you had before. Other corrections I would do 
is just because we started so oh no i lost my color correction for the shadow all right so other things we could do is just really push that that, that read of ice i'm very very um i was very mild with the with the blue so so i would i would even push it to that that looks really really blue and we're just looking at the reference again which is more navy but if you want that turquoise look as well this is really really uh sorry really really turquoise and then if you want things a little bit more purple we've seen the glaciers that look like this i, I like a little bit of, of both i'm just gonna make it like that okay and then we'll look at the before it's a really really simple challenge that you guys you know had um and you see how the trunk has no blue in it but i just i faked it i faked that uh, i mean sorry it has no light there but i just faked that light there right um the trunk will cast a shadow on itself so it feels like the trunk would actually maybe i don't know just my visual instinct is telling me i could be wrong um, and then there's the shadow of the mammoth actually on. No, but the light is behind. But I could fake it. Shadow of the mammoth on the tusk. That would be really cool to do. So we just select the whole tusk and then just cut off an area. And that's just how you fake that cast shadow. So new layer. Cast shadows can be cast on. They're not glowing. Ice doesn't glow. Yeah, that's a new layer. And I think that's really cool. I'm just going to change the angle to be a little bit more sharp. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And just keep blurring it till I like it. And because it's an ambient light, I'm going to just, um, just soften that shadow a little bit. It's nice. Um, and then maybe because of the cast shadow, I'll cut off the highlighters around the tusk just so that I'm supporting that shadow. But at this point, it's getting a bit advanced because now I'm just like combining cast shadows and, 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 and freaking subsurface. So. But that halo, that crown of light hanging out is just really nice to push, you know, like just to really push it. Just to get that icy, frosty tip. This mammoth's got frosty tips. <laughs> and then just the other side of this, just ever so slightly up in it. Maybe not. We fix the edge first. Um, mm, mm. And then the torso itself, like this whole torso, could use. Sometimes you can do subsurface scattering just by color, um, color mode, just by adding. But you see, it looks weird when it's not illuminated as well. But just by color mode, you could technically add subsurface just by the change of color, because it's a glow inward out. So it's not that the ice glows on its own like a like a light source in and of itself. It glows because of the light trapped inside its translucency. I'm just trying to clean up the tusk here. Uh, is it tusk? No, is it trunk? Yeah. And then I'll show you the before and after. <clears throat> Another cool thing you could have done with the tusk, which I think you did, uh, sorry, with the trunk, is um, just make it like more jagged. I'm not sure if you did. I don't know if that's just texture edges, but you could just make him make made out of um, multiple shells. And, and the way you make something look like it's layered shells is just by painting the shadows of the sh of the shells. You don't paint the shells. Some shells catch light. You're actually just painting the shadows of them. All right. So that's how you make something feel like it's layered layers and layers 
of like scales or some kind of shelled texture. I really don't know what other word to use other than. Okay, and you just keep going. And then sometimes those shells catch light in certain areas. You know, some of them just catch some light. So obviously don't do it like this, make them smaller. Um, but if you if you were really after this look, so let me copy paste it, go back, paste, and then shrink it, and then just change the color, lower the opacity, and you can just do that literally everywhere. And you can get your effect. Okay. When you find an efficient way to do something, an efficient if when you work with textures, you can even even make those shadows um, just all you know all the subsurface color, which is really cool because it's like the details only coming out because of the subsurface. Um, but yeah, you have to find an efficient way of of uh, representing the texture. So it's the illusion of the texture, not the actual texture itself. Any questions at all before I show you the before and after? I'll just not do that. Um, on the ground, because it's subsurface, you might have an outline of blue of that turquoise around the shadow. So sometimes shadows are desaturated, but their out, outer rim is saturated for a lot of reasons mostly subsurface, mostly light bouncing off the surface, and then the fact that um, mid-tones reveal more saturation. It could be all of that combined. I'm trying to get rid of any purples you have. And if he is like the bringer of the storm, you know, the bringer of the winter storm, you could have just made a really cool white shadow of, of like winter coming in and then desaturating things. The closer you get to the mammoth, just because he's like bringing the storm with him, that really helps make it feel like the ground is really populated with that white film. Okay, and then finally the bloom, really big quality of snow reflecting light is that it's reflecting light. Meaning there's a bloom, just like there would be um, if you were using like a, a tanning thingy. I don't know what these people use when they go to the beach. Just to make sure that they had not burned all their skin, they get this little thing that, that they put under their neck to help them tan. Worst thing it can do for your skin when they do it. So those things radiate light outward. Snow is just like that. And you can't create that feeling that snow looks like that without that bloom. And just look at the before and after. It's like dull and not dull, you know? It's like active texture and inactive texture. And I am so tempted to raise that blue all the way up. Oopsie, wrong layer. All the way up. All right, a reflector, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, I bring a little of uh, the fog close to the ground invading the summer scene. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the fog I brought in, but it's all up to you guys. And then the stuff in the background, um, this stuff in the background, it's helping match. But what you could do is just show also how the background is kind of turning into a tundra. Just so that he's not the only blue thing in this entire scene. And then it's also a problem with your painting. It's very, very dim. You're kind of scared of all of your contrast. Uh, I'm trying to be really careful here. So let that white really shine through. No, let it come through. Just like so. And uh, I was just going to correct the amount of blue I had running back this way. 
All right, so let's take a look at the before and after. You understood textures, you know how they work. Before, it's very dull, very, I mean, you can tell you're going for something that doesn't have blacks in it. So the fact that you did not have pure black definitely was a plus. You were going somewhere, um, but you didn't have that subsurface scattering that is required for these types of textures. After, before, after. So now he really does look like a, you know, an ice tundra fella. And I'm just, I don't know how that happened that way there. Now who did that? And I'm not happy with this um, cast shadow that much, just, just because. I like it visible in the thumbnail, but I don't want it visible too close up. So it's like an ambient. And you see that trunk, it's hard to read as a mammoth, you know, as an elephant. So I just moved it over. All right, any questions at all? Oops. <laughs> kind of like when you open the freezer. Yeah, very cool. Um, it's a nice looking painting. And uh, it's a rock for the team. Good job, Sia. Um, Thank you. Um, it tells a story in itself. Um, that's what good art does. Yeah. I love that. I love how you can just tell what the story is about without looking. That's why you guys should do these challenges because when are you going to do another ice study? Like never, unless you had to when you were hired to do it, if you ever do that. Join the challenges. They're really, really, really fun. All right. Um, and then we have this piece, which was hand painted. But you can see how outside of your outlining, really the only thing keeping this looking like it's ice is your outline. So you have some outlines happily, like, you know, they're, they're nice near the light source. So let's get rid of the outlines everywhere else. They're not helping. And instead of those, we have a nice core shadow, which we will soon turn into that subsurface scattering. So obviously this is digital on a traditional piece. So you see how me throwing light in here suddenly made this super, super reflective, I mean, uh, see-through. We're just showing that the light can come through. It has to be a different color. Because it's that light color combining with the color of the dragon. So this entire half of the dragon is supposed to be dark. So this entire section should have been, you know, a dark value. And then after that, we use this color in. It's super, super, super simple. You just cross it off your list to show what's happening with these with these textures. So I'll get the other layer. But before I do, I'm really just gonna pack that saturation in. And then go to the before and then just try to soften that edge I made. and then raise that right up. I know it's digital, it's traditional, so it's hard to make it read as white, but um, if for some reason you're limiting yourself to traditional you're, and, you're, and you're still early in your development, you're gonna improve, traditional artists improve less quickly just because you have to go through a lot more to complete the same amount of work. Um, and your, your sketchbook, I see it as an obstacle. I'm not talking biased because I've done both. Um, I, I use a sketchbook and I use um, digital to sketch and I know for a fact I draw better, not because I'm used to it, but because there are not as many obstacles in my tradition digital media as there are in traditional. In traditional, I have to manipulate my eraser tool. I have to uh, hold my pencil, which I don't like. I've never used screen tablets. I have to, um, there's just a lot of uh, uh, sitting discomfort, you know, with my sketchbook, uh, kind of like grooming the environment so that it just lets me draw, um, eraser dust. It just feels like there are so many things not letting me paint. And I could be just, um, you know, throwing tons and tons of color, edges, brush variety, um, no cleaning when I'm doing digital and I can get that lesson done and out of the way. So it's easier for me to get mileage, not that it's a tr a digital artists are better than traditional, it's easier to build mileage through, through digital. Um, 
Uh, so did I say that right? Yeah, it's easier to build mileage through digital. It's not that digital is better than traditional or anything like that. Um, so factor that into you know like your goals this coming year. If you don't have a tablet in this day and age, you're doing yourself a big disservice. Get a tablet, they're not expensive. I know you have an expensive phone um, and, and not putting away a hundred bucks just for a good tablet so you can get that mileage down. If you're scared of digi digital, I don't know what you're scared of digital for. It's so forgiving, you could delete and start over. And traditional, that shit's solidified for the rest of your existence. I have nasty sketches from when I was a kid that I wish I'd that never existed. And I can't delete them because I would throw them away because Abu would kill me. Um, but anyway, like, uh, yeah, obviously that's not an excuse. It's, uh, if you really want to do dig traditional, do it. Um, but your mileage is slowing down significantly to a trickle in comparison to the brush strokes and the, 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 um, just the mileage, I guess, <laughs> that's the best word here, that you could be accessing um, by being a digital artist. It's just a big time in an artist's life when they decide to challenge themselves through digital. If digital is scary because you don't know how to use it, what do you mean? You're like, you're never going to learn how to drive if you're, you're, you're going to just not learn how to drive because it's scary? Um, how about other things? How about a game? Have you Did you learn all the buttons and controls of a game? Um, did you like, you know, decide, okay, I'm not playing this game because it's just too difficult to learn these controls. Is that what you say? No, you learn the, you learn it and you learn it well and you beat the game. And so, um, that's what you guys should be doing is, is thinking of it like that. It's just another tool. It's just another one of those, um, you know, where I just have to learn the controls, play it long enough, get used to it. So I hope I'm showing you just kind of what I mean. Just with that, uh, casting the shadows in as a, um, the subsurface scattering, uh, stage. Alright, My use of dodge tools just, uh, the fact that I'm on dodge tools just making me freak out, but. So you see how the cast shadow is displaced from it? Just like we did here, the cast shadow is displaced. Wow, this, this really is washed out. Let's drop some of those values down. All right, so like the before, and then before I did that, damn, that was washed out. And then just not so bad, not so dark with the environment. That's much better. That was really washed out. Yeah, that should help a great deal. And then the complete before. So I think you 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 um you, you made it washed out so that it feels like ice. But you can see this picture here. This is not washed out. This still has a crap ton of contrast. Okay. Damn. How did I not see that till I went to another painting? Like does traditional art school help in painting digitally? Nope. Is it necessary to get classes there to be successful in drawing at all? Nope. No, no, on both counts. Art school, I'm sorry, if you're in an art school, art school is not required to be good at art. It's good for connections, it's good for a resume, it's good for like um, non-freelance, even those who don't have, who have a great portfolio, who don't have a lot of education, um, can still pass as artists if they have a strong portfolio in, in, in the industry. So I, it's not, it's, it's social climbing, I, I understand that, um, connections, yeah, I said that, but it, art school does not make you draw better. Okay, so it's about that same thing. So here you have a lot of detail. And again, it's that saturation glowing from the inside out and a different color. Just the, whatever the light source is. No, that's not going to work. Yeah, actually the total color might be green and then the navy is like this, so it's an inverse. Okay. 
And then you just find all the shadows and do this exact thing. Instead of a core shadow, you just have a belt of subsurface scattering color. So subsurface scattering cancels out core shadows. Write that back. All right. And I'm just gonna use, because it's still a hard, so it's, it's just because it glows doesn't mean, and has bloom doesn't mean that the entire texture is gonna be soft edged. You still need that harshness, that lasso harshness of um, ice. Sorry, that's my train of thought. Same thing here. I'm just trying to rush through the second ones just so it's not too long across this time around. But I'm officially on vacation after today. I'm going to hopefully be streaming more from my tablet, from like my sketching tablet, which I only use for sketching. Um, not for painting. Um, maybe I could do some more uh, RuneScape streams. I've been playing RuneScape, I know. Um, I'm smudging the edge here. Uh, because, I don't know, I've just been really into RuneScape. It's really fun. I love the quests. And I'm just learning a lot about fantasy and stuff like that. And I'm going to color correct, too, because you know how it's like a very un uh, uniform color palette. And that should make it look more like ice. And again, just find any pockets of shadow and actually just illuminate and saturate under that color code. <clears throat> um, so before I did that, and then I'll just kind of okay. Um, that detail you have there is too strong. The framing is not good. Um, so make sure you frame better. Uh, try to think about an environment. Um, this one is, is just bothering me. So I'm going to try to at least get that black background established here. So that we have an outline for the dragon, which reads instantly. Get its neck out because it's like we're losing the silhouette, so it's hard to know what is what. Okay, and then I'm going to really sharpen. Oops, that cash, that core shadow here. And then try to saturate. Oops. Use your sponge tools if you don't know how to use them. Um, now's a good time to start. And then just throw that white in there. So the saturation is very, very close to the core shadow. And then that's where you put that different color. So what are the lessons we learned about texture today? So this one is really tricky because it's muddy. So then, because he's detailed, I gotta go back and work on where that, uh, texture is happening. So what did I say about the habits of textures and how to learn those? Um, I'm trying to find a good subsurface scattering color for the for the head and then moving down might be a combination of different ones it's just glowing inside and out because that light is behind him or in front of him I'm not really sure and that rim light probably won't work either and the same thing here, that yellow light shining through, turning this turquoise. And it's like a, a transition. It's not a point comes where the ice is so see-through, it just turns white on the tail, and the tail slowly starts to look turquoise. 
and then goes back to that navy color. So shadow is blue, like col ice color proper. Midtones are uh, subsurface scattering plus light. So the turquoise and the blue, like the blue and the yellow mixed, and then the highlighters are completely white. Today's been all about, today's been brought to you by ice. <laughs> we dedicate this broadcast to ice. <laughs> I really just want to like mess with that. Just show like an inner stem, maybe like a heart of ice, like Escaflone. And then where the light, where the eyes would be, just throw in like a nice cheesy anime white to match. And just keep following that same pattern over and over. But as you can see, you're not really, you're not really. Uh, you don't have a lot of access to it. It's hard to critique traditional with digital media because it, I'm just re I'm just painting from scratch at this point. I'm redoing everything. Um, and the before looks good or better because it's just all traditional, so it's all matching. And that's why the, the, the before would look a little bit more uniform. Because right now I have half a painting that's digital and half of it is traditional or like 50%. Um, because it's so uniform, it just looks like a nice etching. But we're turning, we're trying to aim for this kind of rendering on a digital, on a traditional bed. It's hard. This episode of Critique Hour is secretly sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, so, does anyone want to talk about what we talked about? <laughs> um, find the habits of objects, the principle of how they behave, and apply that to other objects. Yeah. You're learning the habit of the texture. Beautiful. Learn the habits of textures and you can use it for many things. Beautiful. Um, Rebecca sent a couple missed uh, submissions. Um, I, I checked the whole wall. I don't know what I could have missed. Uh, oh, I, I don't, I don't, I can't believe I missed that. Um, did they submit it recently, today? Maybe I can try to hurry up and do this one. Um, yeah, I'm gonna find this. Uh, let me see. Okay, so uh, so it's going to be really, really quick, record time. So I'm going to change it to a more icy color. All right. We're going to get all of those shadows and illuminate them. So just raise those up. And I'm going to get the old layer back, so it's okay if I'm bleeding outside of the object. So I'm actually just kind of like... Um, injecting the shadows with with bright light All right and then there's the general subsurface scattering again don't worry i'm going to go to the old layer so now we made it seem like those shadows are all illuminated go back to before i did that and then just erase in the softness Wow, Kyle, you, you saw me leaving and then you just had to. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, okay, well, I'll do a last thing at the end. If I missed out on any saturation. And then um, just cleaning that edge. So you guys all resorted to purple. It's really funny like how that happened. You all really just went for that purple look. Subscriber. Oops. Lower opacity. And then I'm going to just really, really gently get light and layer and bring up this contrast here. Just trying not to 
let it get too dark in there. Another little pocket I could illuminate. Go to the before and just erase. Add it till it feels right. And then I'm going to try to find all of these little areas and give them the same color. So, and then make sure we get that white as well. So all of this subsurface here gets that same turquoisey color or else it won't look like the same texture all the way through. Okay. And then a little bit of smudging. This, this neck area is really problematic. Let me see if the highlights save it. Okay, and then the highlights, which again, new layer. I'm gonna just All right, I'm working too fast. Okay, and then this is a detailed area, so I gotta be careful with that. All right, and then I like how you did the hair. That actually came out really nicely. And then the ears should be her ears. It's the only place in nature where we're constantly getting that. And then I'm gonna select and cast a shadow on that nearby ear. It's just gonna be the simplest little shadow. Okay, and then um more white along the front going down I cannot believe I'm painting with dodge tool <laughs> I'm being very careful and the same thing really really careful brush strokes the nostril is going to catch some light this nostril caught some light it's almost like a trim around the entire piece but remember that there's cast shadows and so not everything gets that illumination And then what I would do is, again, just use light and layer, or like a really saturated light and layer to raise that um, dimness of the unicorn. And it, in general, it feels like the unicorn should be on and like a really nice uh, gradient. It should be like really light at the ends. So zooming out so I don't get too attached I'm going to, because um, when you zoom out, it kind of detaches you from being obsessed about your painting. Kind of helps you do those big changes without feeling too um, pressured to, uh, to not damage the painting. So in a general sweeping motion, I'm lightening the top. All right, so it was too dark before. And then this layer needed erasing, so just like a quick little thing like that. And then under each of them, just like we did before, I'm just repeating the tutorial really, uh, is that subsurface scattering trim as well. Oh, this layer was doubled. it's definitely off to a better start and then we have like this muscle structure here that might be catching some light but gets cut off 
which I could have done with those tools actually. Just like that. And then this whole shadow can be illuminated. God, dodge tool is so volatile. No wall actually color. So I'm trying to work really, really fast to accomplish these changes, but um, hopefully you guys got the idea. Um, and are moving in different directions now with your with your goals. You, you get it, you know, you understand that at one point or another, I'm gonna have to start doing textures. I'm gonna have to get on that. All my students in private tutoring go through a texture regimen, all of them. I just don't know, you know, I don't trust them. Are they gonna do that shit once they leave tutoring? No, <laughs> um, if they don't do it here, they're never going to do it. So I, I make sure to, to, you know, to force them to you know, really, really uh, try something different and get into those studies that they would never have done unless they do the next masterpiece. Which, as you know, is, is not good. And this entire one here gets... Uh, that green and you can go for like the more turquoisey saturation oh it's a lot um but it's definitely in the right direction let's look at the before because i'm not sure if i want to erase this layer a little bit more but before it just looks like a white horse you know it doesn't look like a horse that's made out of ice and then the after definitely moving in a different direction now towards ice and then I would say a little bit of both. Basically what you want to do is you just cancel out a lot of the contrast the further up you go and darken it the lower you go so it actually looks like the horse is made of that stuff. Like the, all the hooves, the hooves should like all be, is that what they're called? The hooves? They should just start getting see-through. So that same thing that we did before until they're like completely white. So that they look like they're made of it. I'm sorry about that clicking and clacking. Uh, that's my stupid fucking table. I still haven't fixed it. Right, so you see how it looks like the, the horse is made of that. And you can still afford some depth. Like you could just do something like that. Make this a bit more blue. But it looks like it's it's this, the light is actually shooting through. You could just make it a little less, or invert it, make the shadow on the other side. So that it looks like the horses. You know, the, the substance, substance is getting thinner and thinner, and it's starting to get more and more translucent. And I would just actually just go ahead and make that the same color. And then, um, that bloom. Yep, that's it for today's class. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for everyone who watched my videos this year. I'll be back in a month or less than that. I'm not, sh I'm still not sure if I want to take a slightly longer break from critique hour um so i might be back on the fifth or a week after that happy holidays thank you everyone for coming today thank you for watching you guys are the best um and uh i'll see you possibly on the 5th of january 2021 bye guys